Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hello, welcome to this episode of Faith on Film. We're so glad you've tuned in to today's episode. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. You know, it's always very exciting uh, when we get to sit down and talk with a longtime friend. Uh, and our guest today, Chris Bueno, uh, who is the CEO of Ocean Avenue Entertainment, uh, is somebody that I've known since, oh my goodness, I'm going to say since the maybe early 80s. And I know Holly has known him for many years as well. Uh, and we got a chance to sit down with him and talk about a movie that he's releasing, or I should say, re-releasing into theaters this Tuesday, May 16th as a Fathom event. One one shot only, one, one day. Uh, so you want to make sure and go see it. If you're watching this show before May 16th, 2023, then you need to get out there to the theaters and watch the movie. If you're watching it much after this, then of course look for it because I'm sure it'll be streaming in various streaming platforms. Uh, but anyway, we uh, were able to sit down. He had not seen that movie for a long time anywhere, so he decided this is a movie everyone needs to see, and that's why he's uh, now spearheading this re-release of The Way, starring Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Now, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at the trailer, and then after that we'll come back and find out all about why he decided that this was a good movie to bring out again into theaters. You should fly with me. Come on, a father-son trip. It'll be fun. Yeah, right. You know, most people don't have the luxury of just picking up and leaving it all behind, Daniel. We agreed that if I let you take me to the airport, you wouldn't lecture me about how I'm ruining my life. I lied. Hello. Are you the father of Daniel Avery? I was walking the road to Santiago de Compostela, 800 kilometers on the northwestern coast of Spain. This is everything it had when we found it. People have walked the path for over a thousand years. The way is a very personal journey, Mr. Avery. Daniel was my only child. We're gonna walk the Camino to Santiago, both of us. Come. This is the way. Hi, I'm Yost. There's an old mystery while I'm doing this trick. Oh, look at cheesemakers. Hola. Hey, don't wait. Yeah, you should try some. No, thanks. No, come with me. Oi, I'm from Amsterdam. That's huh? What are you looking to score? <laughs> I love this guy. It wears off quick, I promise you. Hello, I'm Jack from Ireland. How long have you been out here? From the Camino or in this particular spot? You pick? Well, geez, uh... It's hard to say. So what is it, on pilgrimage to change your life? Something like that. Dead box with the ashes. My son. That's pregnant. I mean, tragic, of course. But pregnant. Oh, no! Tom, your son. I am so sorry, I had no idea. My son was almost 40. Yeah, but he'll always be your baby. What was your son like? Smart, confident, stubborn. Pissed me off a lot. It was a lot like you. Hey, that picked up my bag. Hey! Hey! You can keep the pack! Just give me the box! You don't choose a life, Dad. You live one. What you can do this on a bike? Why the hell are we walking? Chris, welcome to Faith on Film. I'm so glad you're with us today. Glad to be here. Old friend. I'm so glad that you're an old friend of both of us. Wait. We've known you for years, but um, me in particular. Holly, who, Holly, I who, who, who are you it's calling old? A, I, I won't say how long. We go back to the, I'll say, we go back to 1991 or 92, I think. I think oh, so. Wow. We do. Yeah. Yes. I, but, I think, but I'm thinking, I think it was even before like, then. Yeah, like 79. Like wow. Yes. So, yeah, yes, this is it's, crazy. <laughs> yes, it's like way, 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 way back. I know, wow. I know. But we're still young. But the good news is you're doing some exciting, fun things in film and movies these days. And we're going to talk about one of them today. Yeah. In fact, I want to start off uh, by asking you, why would you release or re-release really a movie that came out 10 years ago? Well, you know, it's it's a question that I honestly didn't think we would do when I first ended up getting 
the rights to be able to re-release this movie. So for me, uh, the thing that I, that, you know, when I'll tell you a little bit about number one, how uh, I ended up, you know, getting the distribution for this, this beautiful film that came out 10, 11 years ago. And part of what <clears throat> I think really uh, I noticed about two, two and a half years ago is I could not find this movie. And in, you know, the, the movies that I distribute, a lot of times when I'm looking for something that I loved that I can't find, there's a lot of times there's a, 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 a story involved of something that happened. And so that was exactly the case with this film. The company that I was aware of that had the distribution rights uh, had gone bankrupt. And so I was able to, number one, figure that out. And then number two, I didn't know Emilio Estevez. He's the director, he's the owner of the film. And so for me, I had to like, well, how do I contact him? And I remembered that Craig Detweiler, which you, you probably both know, had done something at Pepperdine 13 years ago to promote the film. So I reached out and I said, Craig, do you have his email or any contact? Oh, yes. he, said, he said, Chris, he says, I've got an old email. I mean, literally it's an AOL email. <laughs> so I thought, okay, you know, I, I sent off an email, said, listen, I think I know that your movie, I, I think you may not know this, but you may have the rights back to your movie. So uh, didn't hear anything. A week went by and all of a sudden he replied. And long story short, because I won't bore you with the details, <clears throat> took about two years for his own attorney to kind of get all the rights back and, you know, and then and then pull it from different places where they weren't even you know making money from it because it was this other company that had it and and then when he was done he said chris will you distribute this for me and i was like pleased and thrilled to be a part of it and then we started to think about well you know with entertainment the way it is these days there's so many options for you know how you distribute something and getting attention and awareness and as much as people absolutely love this film uh we just felt like you know what if we were able to get fathom to agree to a one night theatrical event we think the people would come we think there's there's enough fans out there that would come mm -hmm. so i set up a meeting with fathom at first they thought what's the hook because for them it has to be a 20 year anniversary. I think last week was Lord of the Rings 20th anniversary. And they're like, wait a minute, this is like 12 years. I mean, and so I said, you know, the hook is this. It's not available anywhere. People can't find this movie. It's not streaming anywhere. So if you, you know, and our plan is we'll put it in theaters first before anybody has a chance to watch it anywhere else. And, and so uh, we set up a meeting and a Zoom meeting with everybody at Fathom, all the execs, and Emilio was on that call. I have to say he sold it because he was so compelling about his passion, his vision for this film that they were like, OK, we're in. And we got our date, which was which is May 16th. And, uh, and so far, ticket sales are going well. You know, you have the pre-sales. So we're looking at how the pre-sales go. And we have our weekly call with Fathom. And they're like, hey, this is this is going good. You guys are doing good. <laughs> and and so you know that's why and i think when you see the comments in like facebook and everything i've honestly never seen so many comments from people going we love this film this is our favorite film oh we did the camino because of the film and so they're yeah. just like they're super fans of this film so uh we're excited you know uh la yesterday emilio was on the kelly and mark show it used to be kelly kelly and ryan yeah now it's kelly mm -hmm. and mark. So they were on, the, it'll be on, uh, coming out on Friday and uh, Good Morning America. So it's really pretty exciting. You know, it's like you don't normally get that for a one night screening of a movie. <clears throat> so we'll see how all that also impacts, you know, the ticket sales. Well, you know, also now social media is now more than it ever was in 20, well, it came out into what, 2010? Or, yeah, 2010. I mean, so it's above and beyond what it was back then. So uh, that is even a whole new leg for it that it never had before as far as promotion and mention and people finding out about it. And of course, with hashtagging the trail and the hashtagging the experience, the way, I mean, now, you know, you've got so many more eyeballs around the world on it and wanting it. So good for them. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. 
Yeah, I, you know, I honestly did not anticipate so many people saying, oh my gosh, we watch it every year. I can't wait to watch it in a theater. And, and, you know, it's like, it's one thing to have a movie. Normally it's just a movie have nobody's seen. And then you get people to come out to, to watch the movie. But this is something where literally people have watched it over and over again. And the experience of watching it in a theater, I think, is is very compelling to them. And then the other aspect of it is that, you know, you have at the end, you have these uh, value added like 15, 20 minutes discussion on the film. And it was Emilio's idea to ask Rick Steves. And if you're familiar with Rick Steves, he's the guy that's on PBS He's like the Europe travel guy. He's been doing the PBS show for years and years and years. And he's the expert on, you know, the Camino and walking the Camino and all things travel. And he's a Christian, too. So they reached out to him. He absolutely said, I'm totally in. So he hosts the after, you know, the bonus feature at the end. And he's got a huge fan base. So... That was exciting. We were able to shoot that in Edmonds, uh, which is outside of Seattle, uh, about four weeks ago. And so it was, it was just a fun time for Denise, my wife, and myself to go and be a part of that and, and go to dinner and have, you know, just that, uh, that time with not only Emilio, uh, but also his father, Martin Sheen, and, his, and Martin's wife. And they've been married 61 years. Wow. So, I think that's a record in Hollywood. Yes. It's a record Honestly. anywhere. <laughs> T- 10 years is a record in Hollywood. <laughs> Martin, and Martin, I think, is 82. So well, how fun to have him I at mean, this age. In, I look back on what he shape. did then. Yeah, he's in great shape. And, you know, he had, you know, he was doing all day taping and everything. Uh, I was more concerned, it's like, you know, let's, man, you know, let's make sure we don't use him up, right? His energy level. But he was just amazing, honestly. I was so amazed. Wow. So, yeah. Now, for those that are watching this program today and maybe don't really know what the movie's about, can you tell us a little bit about what The Way is all about? Yes. Okay. So, in the movie, uh, Martin Sheen plays kind of this retired dentist who, you know, play, likes to play golf and not really in touch with his faith. He goes to church maybe on, on Easter and Christmas, right? Um, he's Catholic and, and he gets a call from uh, somebody in Spain and they let him know that his 45-year-old son, uh, played by Emilio Estevez, has passed away. And to come and, you know, you know come and, rec- and, and get his body. So it, you know, you see what, you know, he comes back to, to Spain and when he recovers the body and sees his backpack, he finds out that he was about to do this long pilgrimage, uh, which is to walk the Camino de Santiago. And he makes the decision to walk the pilgrimage in, you know, for his son. And so he takes his ashes and he goes on this journey which is a, you know, quite a long journey. And along the way, he picks up three or four people that are part of the story and they become kind of the community that he, and they, he becomes some kind of a father to them. But the important thing is that you really see him reconnect with God and his faith at the end of the film. And there's some moments that are just so <clears throat> poignant and heartfelt that really stay with you. So that's, that's, that's kind of the story. Mm-hmm. And Martin Sheen is devout Catholic, so, you know, he probably loves the fact that this is, again, a pilgrimage and a spiritual one for him as well. He is. Right. He's I think very- he took it with his grandson. That's the story that I remember is that he he and his grandson, Emilio's son, went on this, I think, in like 2000, early 2003 or something. They went on it and had this experience, and he came back and, and told Emilio, oh, this is such a great thing. You should do this. So yes. uh, he— you know, he drove it or something. He said he didn't walk it, but he drove it, you know. And didn't yeah, it's it. uh, Emilio's son uh, walked the Camino. He was the one that told uh, his grandfather, Martin, about his experience. And that kind of was the catalyst for Emilio writing this story and directing this film. Uh, plus, later on, Emilio's son, who had met someone on the Camino from Spain, they're now married and they have kids. Wow. 
<laughs> it, wow. It's had a lot of, uh, there's been a lot that's happened as a result of this film. Wow. Wow. Was Martin happy that you were doing it? Yes. I mean, I, he didn't really know about my faith, but it was, you know, we had a chance to talk and have dinner, like I said, a, a, about four weeks ago. And it was, it, you know, it was great to talk just about our, our faith, you know, obviously I'm not Catholic and come from the evangelical side, but my own, I think my own journey and, and with Denise, uh, my wife, we, we are very much have been leaning into the contemplative side of God and really, you know, the beauty of liturgy, things that as a, someone growing up, I wasn't really aware of. And so we're, we're loving all that part of it. And, uh, so I think we had a lot in common in that in that way. That's you know that's very exciting that there can now be such a partnership between evangelicals and Catholics because I grew up very much like you actually in, in the uh, the Assemblies of God, <clears throat> very you know very uh, evangelistic but very uh, what, what would be the word I'm looking for they they looked at Catholics as oh those are not really Christians. We are. But that that seems that that wall, I think, seems to be disappearing. And it's great to see someone like you that that is being, you know, that is really a, a, just providing this uh, this uh, the, the way that's providing the way to maybe bridge that gap. Yeah. You know, I my dad, as you remember, uh, mm -hmm. Isaac, on the show that we met each other on right. way back when we, we did our taping at TBN. Mm -hmm. He had a few Catholic charismatics on his show, which was quite controversial. A lot of evangelicals, especially in Latin America, they were more conservative. Well, how, how did you do that? And my dad was just a bridge builder. There are always going to be the fringe, either on the evangelical side or the Catholic side. You know, the people are like, wow, they're really into that theology. But for the most part, you know, the, the people that are really searching after God, whether they're Catholic or evangelical or even in the mainline denominations, you know, their heart is after God. And if we can focus on that, yes, we're going to have our differences and that's okay. But, you know, uh, there's a lot more we have in common. And I feel like that's where God would want us to focus. But the story is also that tension between the father and the son, because the son asked him to go on that with him. And he said, well, I'm too busy. I can't just pick up and go off like you want to do. I can't do it. And then, of course, the son passes away. And then that father is living with the guilt that he didn't go spend time with him and, of course, makes that journey. So there's a lot of father-son dynamics that I think a lot of people, a lot of men, you know, will relate with. And being the son and being the father, he steps in and that emotional journey. It's not just a spiritual one. It was about connecting with his son, and and you know, we won't give everything away. But through it, he takes a little. No, it's, it's, he takes ashes it's very and much, put on post, and yes. you know, it's his dedication to his son. You know, it's very much the case too. And you know, a lot of fathers uh, that get older, you're you're going to have regrets if you didn't spend the kind of time with your kids. Uh, you know, I have older boys. I think back to the how crazy things were, and. And I wasn't as available as I am as an older father yeah. right now. So, you know, it does really move into that. And, you know, Emilio will tell you that this is not the character he's that his dad's playing a character that was not who he was as a father, because Emilio, I mean, Martin would take the whole family like when they did Apocalypse Now and they shot that they would take the whole family. And they would put him up in the hotel and he wouldn't take the first class. He would just get everybody on the plane and they would get their accommodation. And so, you know, he, Emilio's memories are of going with the family on all these different shoots. Oh, wow. And that's the reason I think one big reason that their marriage is a 61 year marriage. right? Now. Yes. Right? Because that would really mess you up in Hollywood when you have a three day or a three month shoot somewhere and you're gone from your, your wife or your husband. Right. And there's a lot of temptation. So that was a very intentional thing. And it, you know, what's remarkable is it uh, of the four kids, I think they have four kids, Emilio, Charlie, Charlie Sheen, and then his sister, they all live within one or two blocks of each other in Malibu. And they've lived that close for over like 30 years. Wow. That's well, quite a neat thing. 
Wow. Yeah. And Emilio, I know he did Bobby with his dad on Bobby Kennedy, the assassination. I know he worked on a couple of other projects, so they have worked really closely together on, on things in the past. And I mean, that's what I, rem- I remember with the reading the notes about this. And he goes, that's what made it work with my father was that we had this close bond. He goes, I can't imagine doing this with anybody else. In fact, I think he even said that Martin at one time said, look, we're trying to get this picked up. We're trying to get it pitched. But if it doesn't, you need a bigger name or bigger actor, you know, do use someone else. And he's like, no, I, I we can't, unless you're it, we can't do this. So I thought that well, was. And, cool. and Martin Sheen has told, uh, and, 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 you know, he told me this too and confirmed it. He says, this is the most important movie he's ever made. <clears throat> Wow. And, you know, you think about all the movies he's made. That's a pretty amazing statement. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? I f- this is where I feel really blessed is my kids all live uh, within literally seven minutes to 25 minutes away from me. Uh, and so now it's really given me the opportunity to do a lot with them. I go to my grandkids' baseball games. I Today uh, I was cutting down a bunch of really super tall trees for my son. And, you know, with something probably a 65-year-old shouldn't be doing. But, you know, I, I, I did it for my son. I You know, and the thing is that I actually, I grew up and oh, I hate to say this. I grew up as a pastor, uh, a few quite a few years that I was uh, pastoring. And... I almost lost my relationship with my kids then because it took so much time. I was not there for them. And so now I'm so thrilled and so bl- feel so blessed that I actually have the time to spend with them. Very important. It is extremely important. In fact, um, how how old is your youngest? I mean, how what's the age he's, of your youngest? He's 12 years old. Oh, my so, gosh. I can't, yeah. believe it. <laughs> I can't believe he's 12. I remember when he was born. He was just a baby. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 12. Oh, oh my gosh. I have a grandkid that's 20, 21. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, is there are there any other exciting projects that you can tell us about? Because you see a lot of movies coming through that go on Netflix and are distributed in other ways. Anything coming up that you're kind of excited about you can kind of give? Give us a hint. Yeah, give us a scoop. You know, uh, gosh, I did watch one that I finished today that is, uh, you know, I don't know. I probably can't say it. It's a really good movie. Let me just say it's connected to Duck, Duck Dynasty. I'll say that. Oh. But it's more of a personal story, and it's not political. Very, very. So, you know, I think that's that's something that's coming. And I was impressed. I thought it was a really good production. Um so, but you know, you know, there's another movie too that we just, I just got the rights to another older movie that again, most people never heard of called Seronia. And uh, so I'm excited because sometimes you find these movies, you go, how did this not get distribution? It's just such a beautiful film. So really, you know, those things like that, that will come out at some right. point. And no. some movies sometimes come out at awkward times. So they don't get because they're overshadowed between seasons, between big films or tent films, tent bowls. So they don't get the publicity and people just kind of let it go. I saw a movie the other day. It was really good on this, you know, cop who has a demon possessed guy and they go after him. And he really was a policeman who really did exorcism with a priest in real life. That came and went so fast because it was in the summer when all the other big movies were around it. It didn't get the promotional. And it's a good film. So there are films. I'm glad you're out looking out for that because they're great films that have been passed by. And so many people nowadays are looking for a good film. You know, without language, know. without the, the, you know, whole thing, woke thing. It's hard to find sometimes. Well, we 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 spent a lot of time watching black and white films from, uh, you know, TCM. We just watched HUD, which was another great film. Like, you know, it's like it, so, you know, because a lot of times you watch some of these newer films and they're so disappointing. We watched Murder Mystery 2 with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. It's like I could barely get through it. It was just nonstop like action, like from beginning to end, there was no, I couldn't breathe. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is exactly what happens when you have a big studio that's orchestrating every second. It's just action, action, action. And at the end you go, okay, wow. Okay. Let's, can we just watch something else just to clear our brain? Yeah. Now, some people may not know this, by the way, again, our viewers may not know this, but you were actually one of the guys behind the distribution of that movie right there, Facing the uh-huh. Giants. Yes, yes, which is behind me too. Right? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. You've come a long so, way since then. 
It, it ha- and it's changed a lot. Boy, mm-hmm. I tell you, it's changed a lot. This, 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 the landscape of independent films, but mm-hmm. glad that I could play whatever role I played. It's been fun. Yeah. Oh, so good to have you on, Chris. And yes. keep us informed if you have something else coming out, like the one you just talked about, or can let us know, hey, come back on and give us an insight and let people be aware. Because, again, for this one, the way, it's a fathom event. So it's only one day. But once if people see it afterwards, maybe look for it, because I'm sure they'll try to distribute it after. Yes, yes. Well, and just thank you for having me on. And I've been I'm, I'm a I'm a fan of your show. So I'm really grateful you guys you you guys do a great you know good content professionally done. Thank you. So kudos thank to you, you both. And you have the distinction by the way of being the first guy that has done the interview with a little dog running around behind you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love your <Yes>. dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well thank you thank you right. chris and that's thank my son oh and, oh, and your son funny. there there you go hey, there he goes <laughs> yay there he is hi Huck. there he is oh good to see yeah. you yes. their father son what a great way to end a story about a father oh, son fan- than seeing a father son perfect way to end it <laughs> fantastic right. thank you so much chris you guys Folks, God bless. We'll, be right, we'll be right back, folks. Hi, my name is Brandon Swartz. I'm an actor, director, writer. I've been in films such as Stealing the Show and TV shows like Fragment. And you're watching Faith on Film. Welcome back. I really hope you enjoyed today's show and our talk with Chris Bueno. Again, if you're watching this show before May 16th, 2023, go to Fathom Events. Find out if, if there's a theater near you that is showing the way. And make sure and get out there and take a look at the movie. It's a very inspirational movie, just a wonderful movie. I remember seeing it about 12, 13 years ago when it first came out uh, and really enjoying it. So this is another opportunity. Get out there and and see it. And of course, if you're watching this program, which I think a lot of you are just because of how long it takes sometimes for these programs to get to the various outlets where you might be watching, uh, then look for it in streaming platforms. I'm sure it's going to be available in several platforms. So just look for the movie The Way uh, and, uh, and check it out. It's a wonderful movie. Let's see, what else? Uh, We've got some great shows coming up as well. Uh, Holly and I recently were at a film festival, uh, ICFF, International Christian Film and Music Festival, and we had a chance to talk to a lot of uh, great uh, directors, producers, actors, uh, talk to them about the films they've got coming out, and just talk to them a little bit about who they are, and we'll be bringing a lot of those interviews to you in the next few weeks, Uh, so make sure and, and keep tuning into the show. Um, also, uh, there is a great new announcement that hopefully we can make on next week's show. Uh, if you if, uh, if you watch the show and and uh, hopefully that show will carry this great new announcement that we've got of a wonderful partnership uh, with a distributor. So don't miss any of our shows. All right. Well, I think that about does it for today. Next week again, we'll see you uh, with another wonderful uh, show. Hopefully, with a lot of those interviews from ICFM. So until next week, take care. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows. 